nice going through the gears on that one, Larry. Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. We're in the western suburbs of Chicago on a perfect day, and I've got Larry Spiker with me. Larry's got an amazing car. Larry, what year, make, and model is this one? This is a 1968 Oldsmobile Cutlass S Holiday Coupe, and it features the Ramrod 350 W31 powertrain. And you've had this car since how long? I ordered it on February 15th, 1968. The original owner yes. of this car. So Larry, let me feature our car here. And right off the bat, we have the 68 where you can't miss it. You've got the dual headlights separated apart from each other with the parking light in the middle. And of course, from this one, the thing that you notice with the Ramrod 350 is the little scoops, which I'll feature, that do the air intake under here. So some great features on the headlights, spacing them out, yet still looking very good. You've got your Cutlass S, as you would expect, Oldsmobile. And on the hood, the faux intake just like so. So Larry, come on back with me. Why this car out of all the cars in the world? How did, uh, first of all, this is a survivor. So this car is not restored. This is just how he ordered it. There may be a few day two pieces on it, but this is it. Why this car out of all the cars in the world? Well, my brother helped me. He was an engineer at the Oldsmobile product engineering garage um, and um, department. He knew this car was coming. And um, he knew that I wanted to get one new car. What were you planning on getting? I had looked at a Firebird Sprint with the overhead cam six four barrel, but he said no, that would be a mistake. Got it. And obviously the Ramrod 350. Does anybody ever tell you why did you put that sticker on your car? <laughs> Occasionally I get that, Lou. You're right. <laughs> I didn't put it on the factory. What, did. Why would somebody put that on their car? They would think. Uh, you never know. I yeah. Think it's, uh, I think it's one of those things they did to help the dealership personnel know what was and wasn't a uh, ramrod. That's great. And we've got the rocket marker light there. And while we've got it in the sun here, let's take a look under the hood, shall we? Sure. So tell me some of the features of this 350 engine. Well, it is a short stroke 350 which was very popular with the uh, dealers that sponsored NHRA race teams because it would rev high and make its horsepower at a very high RPM. Got it. I see they put a little shielding over this yes. and you can see the ramrod comes these pieces that flex all the way down into that air induction that you have there. And we've got it nicely put where you can see the dealer tag right there. Now, is there anything on the heads that indicates this? Um, well, the cylinder heads were uh, the 354 barrel. You see the five down here, okay. which designates a um, um, higher horsepower V8 head. Well, what was unique about the W31 heads is it used the 455 valves. Okay. So it had a 2-inch intake and 1.62 exhaust, which gave it a high breathing capacity. And the other thing about the cylinder heads that are unique, these are specially made cylinder heads. They only made 750 pairs of them. Um, they have some special porting done to them to make them breathe better from 4,000 RPM up. Is that right? Yeah. Thus giving it the high revving, good oxygen in and combustion out featuring. And one day two item on the engine. Yeah. I put the 1970 aluminum intake manifold on it because it just looked good. Okay. You know? Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Let's, uh, mm -hmm. let's fire it up, shall we? Sure. Larry, 
let's uh, step on the brakes for a moment, if you would. Let me just let it uh, idle for a second. turn it around for you so we can show you it from the back. So we're at the back of the car now. We've turned it around for you. And you can see the streamlined look of this Cutlass. So we have some day two pieces on the back here. Larry, what do we have? Well, I changed out the rear bumper and added a 442 bumper so I could have those beautiful trumpets. I love the way that looks on the car. So here's the trumpets of the 442, not W31. Ramrod 350, but I agree they look great. And you have the S and the Cutlass, and because we're in Illinois, we've got quite a bit of wind, but we'll just deal with that. And then down underneath is the W27 cover loop. Um, I installed that, that was a, a dealer uh, available accessory. Feature that to the best of my ability. You bet. We'll come back to the back of this car. And then the last item that yeah. I added were the uh, pinstripes that run from the top of the rear window to the top of the rear bumper. Oh yeah, I see those. Yeah, very nicely done. It looks like it perfectly matched the car, so it looks outstanding. And speaking of things we have with the car, well this one has quite the bit of trunk and treats. So here's our trunk and treats, and well you'll see we have plenty. So let me start with, well, the actual trunk. You can see how the car jacks up, our jack stowage, along with our caution, anti-spin. We have a light. Couple of features right off the bat. We have a power antenna. Obviously, you can see the tire with the red line there. Now, Larry, come closer to me here. What is this right here? That is a rear speaker reverberator. Uh, it was used quite a bit on the early 60s cars. My brother had one extra, and I said, do you mind if I install it? And I did. So it gives that echoey sound to the music. Very cool. Now, this here is the color chart, and you can see this is the color of his car. Okay. And then we have the salesman's price sheet. And if you want a greater look at some of these other brochures, I'm going to share that link. We had uh, Tim Wong's 442 on, and we did a deep dive into all of these. So I'm not going to go all the way through this brochure with you. I'll give you that. Sure. Thank you. And we're not going to go all the way through this one. It actually doesn't have anything on the W31. But you'll see we've got the chassis, the body by Fisher, and here's the Oldsmobile for 68. And you can see they have the 442. Here's the 442 again and yet they don't talk about the W31, and you'll see why in a second. So I'm gonna show you why. So here's our power teams that we have here, which talks about the different engines. They don't talk about the W31. This is the actual sticker for this car. So there you can see the option for the W31 air induction, the 350 cubic inch engine and there's the overall cost. Not too expensive, Larry, for that. Why was that? Well, also don't wanted to have this <clears throat> kind of a notch below the 442 on pricing. A junior supercar, one that was a little bit more affordable, you know. And this piece here, the zone copy, print of June 67, this is your actual car build. Yes, you can see the dealer name in the upper left corner and then the, the owner and salesman's signature information at the bottom. 
And you'll notice that we had to write in the W31 option. Notice here we have that date of 12-8. So this was a late, what is it, a half-year car, Larry? Yeah, middle middle year or mid mid-year release. Mainly to qualify for NHRA drag racing, which kicks off in January with the Winter Nationals. You can hear my hand on the plastic mat there as I lean off it. And this was a. Uh, this is all the W31 specs. So this is a uh, promo Pre pictures. This is the press release. Press release. Thank you. From uh, Public Relations Oldsmobile, and it shows um, the car that was set to um, be kind of the prototype. Notice you have the Ramrod logo there, but when they show you this picture, and this is the ad, one of the only ads for this car, the W31, you don't see the Ramrod there. No, you don't, and I think that was because the, the um, Oldsmobile management decided to add the Ramrod 350 name so that dealerships that had them would know they were different. So again, this fabric book we're going to show you in great detail uh, in just a moment. If you go into the description, there's a real good link to the Oldsmobile information there. What do we have in this Youngsmobile? This was the uh, training kit that the Oldsmobile factory rep would take out to um, teach, train the dealership personnel yeah. on what was new for 68. And the 68 campaign was always a step ahead, that little... Uh, and then they also changed it from Oldsmobile to Youngmobiles because um, the cars were very youthful. So when you open this, this would have had a, um, a script book in yeah. here, okay. in that section. And then if you remember the old style, uh, I guess they called them projector, uh, strip, film strip projectors, yeah. where you actually turn the handle sure. to go from one shot to the next. They, would be, in they would be in here. And then any other handout material that the sales yeah. uh, department would get. And they also trained the service department as well. So there's 68 attaché case. Yes, and uh, <laughs> I worked at Oldsmobile, and uh, they were getting ready to throw this out, and I got it before it went to the dumpster. <laughs> you said, said, I'm taking that yeah, with me. That's right. All right, and that's our trunk and treats. And we're back. So let me show you something. Larry, you shared something unique about the roof line. Let me stand back from the car and share with us what you've got. Okay, um, in 1968, Oldsmobile switched to kind of the uh, Coke bottle shaped, like this Corvette, um, uh, and the fastback look. In 67, it was more boxy. And one of the things that Olds did, they got an exclusive on the window opening roof line treatment. It comes back into a peak at the back of the rear window where the other divisions have kind of a squared off look okay. or maybe an angular look. I see those two pieces of chrome blending somewhat together. Yeah. And then you shared the pinstripe. They offered uh, the GT pinstripe in 1968 and that runs from the front of the or the back of the windshield around the, the back around. and to the front fender. Just like so. One other thing speaking of a car like this I just want to feature where of course the gas goes and that's right there. So let's go to the interior, may I? Yes. Thank you. So as we feature this one, and we position it there, you can see the door panel nicely done, not super over the top, but you've got your cranks, your crank for the vent window, big mirror, and let's share the interior here. I see one day two where we've got a W31 listed on the ashtray there. But other than that, you can also see the wonderful buckets. We've got the back seat. It's got to be a little challenging getting to the corner of that back window to clean it. The wonderful roof liner. Notice the seat belts connected to that. And as we get inside it, we see the correct amount of pedals and the 442 Muncie Hurst shifter right there with your shift ball. And as I sit in it, you've got the vinyl seating, 
nice instrumentation. I like how they have the kind of depth to the gauging. This is the original Miles, Larry. Is that 73? Yes, it is. Yep. Wow. And the tachometer I had to switch out because uh, I was having some deflection issues with my TikTok tack. So I went for something that looked like it would have come with a car, and that is the um, uh, auto meter. Got it. The auto meter upgrade there. And you can see the power antenna switch there above the radio. Right up here. Oh. And another day two item is I did put a 1970 Toronado stereo FM radio in the car. Got it. An upgrade there. But the interior is all original for a 1968 with exceptional panels on the driver's seat. Wow. That's really held up well. Larry, I think we got to uh, take this one for a ride. Okay, let's do it, huh? So Larry and I are riding here and we wanted to take you on a little cruise in the Ramrod 350. Now tell me about the gearing on this car, because it's a little bit unique. This is what they call a uh, uh, non-street uh, setup. It's a close ratio Muncie 220 to 1 first gear, and then it has a 433 to 1 a rear axle positive traction. So this was the setup that was recommended for competition. Nice. <laughs> Just the way we like it. Yes, and, and at the drag strip the car turned 1355, 103 miles an hour. So that's pretty good pretty, for 68. Pretty good for a small block, you know. Yeah, for sure. I just want to show people this little view we've got here today, which we're driving in, which is just outstanding. We're gonna turn around and take you back through that way. What's the reaction when you're at a car show? Well, more people are coming to appreciate the um, uh, the small block uh, old W31. You know, it's kind of a hidden uh, treasure for a long time. Not a lot of people knew about it, but more know now that this car has uh, has special features to it, and uh, the the power and performance is uh, is well respected. You can hear that. You know, it, it's obviously high revving. I mean, we're, we're, what are we in fourth gear right now? Uh, we're in fourth gear and uh, going 40 miles an hour at. 2800 RPM. Yeah, so that's a lot of RPMs for that time frame for sure. It's not a road car, Lou. No, it's a stoplight car. <laughs> I like that. It's a stoplight car. See you at the next stoplight. Notice my tail lights. That is awesome. And what a wonderful way to wrap up the video as far as our ride. Larry, what a treat. Thanks for taking me in your special car. The Ramrod 350 W31. Thanks, and a survivor. Thanks for being on my car story. My pleasure.